Hello, my name is Terry Dickerson, and today I'll be reading Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Steer up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Good morning, Friendship in Emory Grove. It is great to be in the house of the Lord um, on this morning. Um, our scripture reading was, uh, that was read earlier it came from Psalms chapter 80, verses 1 through 7. And for the focus of our um, sermonic discourse for today, um, I will be reading on um, in chapter 80, uh, but focusing on verses 17 through 19. And I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand and the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us, give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. This morning I would like to preach <clears throat> for the time that we have from the subject, a community in crisis. A community in crisis. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for your presence in this place. Now, God, I ask that you will fall fresh on this, your servant. God, minister unto me, even as I minister unto your people. For God, if you don't speak in this place, your people won't receive a word. We pray that your word might go forth so that you might be glorified. The people of God might be edified and Satan might be horrified. In Jesus' name, amen. So on this fifth Sunday um, in November, we are now uh, at the first Sunday in Advent. Um, and in the life of the United Methodist Church, one of the things that uh, preachers do um, is preach from the lectionary. And so um, I examined the lectionary texts for this particular, uh, this first week. And um, in the United Methodist Church, in this lectionary or this Advent season, uh, we are emphasizing community, or the emphasis will be on community. Um, and so as we go through the next four or five Sundays, all of the texts that are used and all of the sermons um, that will be preached will focus on the whole concept of community and examine uh, various aspects. Um, and, and for this particular week, uh, we will be emphasizing, or the emphasis, um, if you look at the lectionary text, and I would invite you to go to the United Methodist, if you actually Google UMC lectionary, it will bring up the website and they have a full listing um, for actually the 52 weeks out of the year of um, the various sermons and the various texts. And so um, during this Advent season, if you are interested in knowing uh, what will be preached ahead of time, um, I invite you to go to the United Methodist website um, and look it up. It's just a great uh, information resource and it kind of breaks down you know, the passages and uh, the various focuses that will be happening um, and the, the focus on what will be preached over um, the course of the Advent season. And so when we look at the text um, in Psalms chapter 80, uh, and this particular text really stood out to me because, uh, and if you look or reflect back on the title uh, for verses number one through seven, uh, the title is A Prayer for Israel's Restoration. And so as I was looking in the commentaries and as I was doing my homework, um, I realized that the children of Israel at this point in the text are almost in a similar situation that we find ourselves in um, in the midst of this global pandemic. Um, there was a lot of chaos going on. There was a lot of confusion going on. In, the, uh, in this um, writing in the Psalm of David, he really was saying, hey, we're in crisis. It's a lot going on. You know, um, it's a lot of confusion going on. They felt like God was angry with them. They felt like God had turned their back on them. And in this particular text, the, the focus and uh, the emphasis is really on trying to restore the relationship or restore um, the connection that they had with God. And so um, how apropos that we find ourselves in the midst of a um, in political confusion, um, we find ourselves in a public health crisis, um, and for many, we find ourselves in crisis financially, 
mentally, emotionally, psychologically. And I believe that as we look at this text um, in the book of Psalms, and as we look at the word that God has for us today, um, and as we look at this community that is in crisis, not only will we see some similarities and some commonalities between where they were and where we are, but I believe that God in this text, uh, in verses number 17 through 19, really gives us a recipe or um, a mechanism or a venue through which to restore that connection in, in, in order to restore that relationship, um, in order to restore uh, calm and peace in what seemed like a very chaotic situation. And so as we look at the text today, um, there are three things, three very quick things that I would submit that as we look at this community in crisis, there are three things that um, they pray for and I believe that we should be praying for uh, in the midst of this season that we find ourselves in, in order to help us and propel us um, to where God is calling us to be. And so the first thing that we see, or the first thing that, that this community did as they were in crisis uh, was to seek protection. Somebody say protection. In verse number 17, it says, but let your hand be upon the one at your right hand and the one whom you made strong for yourself. Oftentimes, when we find ourselves in chaos, oftentimes when we find ourselves in confusion, oftentimes when we find ourselves in the midst of mess, one of the things that we feel that is lacking is that we are lacking protection. If you think back on situations where you felt like uh, you were protected, uh, there is a certain sense of security, there's a certain sense of affirmation when I feel like I'm protected. And so the fact that this community was in crisis and they felt like God's protection was not upon them, they sought and asked God to restore back to them the protection that he had given them previously. Now that's important for us today because in situations where we may find ourselves, in situations where we, we may uh, feel mentally unstable, in situations where we may, we may feel financially unstable, in situations where our job security is not, is not in place and, and our health security is not in place, Oftentimes, we need the protection of God in order to help us to get through the situation. And so here in this verse, in, in uh, uh, verse number 17, basically the, the, the children of Israel are like, hey, God, we need your protection. We've, we've tried to do things on our own. We, we've tried to fix things on our own. But it just doesn't seem to be working out. And what they're asking God is, God, place your hand upon us. Oh, how, how, how different life would be when we understand that the hand of God is upon us. Oh, how much more assurance and how much more confidence that we will have as we face tests and trials day after day after day after day, knowing that a true and a living God is providing protection to us. What would it look like in your life, in, in your job life, in, in the midst of people losing their jobs, in the midst of companies closing down, in the midst of people dying every day? What would it look like in your life if you operated like the spirit of the living God was protecting you? What, what would it look like when, when you come up against tests and when you come up against trials and when you come up against temptation that you recognize that God is standing right there with you as a source of protection? For many of us, we have not experienced the protection hand of God. For many of us, when, when we think back over our life, when we think about the foolishness that we've been through, when we think about the many times that we should have been dead and gone, but by the grace of God that we are here today, what would it look like in your life if you began to operate like you knew that God was protecting you in everything that you did and said? How different would your disposition be? How, how different would, would, would your actions be? How different would your life be overall if you recognized and realized that the hand of God is upon you? I will continue to say, it doesn't matter who you slept with last night. It doesn't matter what you inhaled last night. It doesn't matter what you drank last night. It doesn't matter what you stole last night. It doesn't matter who you may have, have mentally, emotionally, psychologically injured last night. The hand of God, the protection of God in the midst of chaos and confusion is upon you. What would it look like when the devil tries to come after you with, with the plots and the schemes, what would it, it look like when, when that, that, that man, that woman, that boy, or that girl tries to come and attack you? What would it look like in your life, sir and ma'am, if you operated like you were under the protection of a true and a living God? Oh, how, 
how different your confidence would be, how, how different your disposition would be because you recognize and realize that, you know, Mon I, I, Montgomery County can't protect me, the Secret Service can't protect me, you know, the, the, the federal marshals can't protect me, but a true and a living God will keep and sustain and protect me like nobody else could. For many of us, we need to come back in the arc of safety. We've been gone so long. We, we've been out in the world so long. The devil has, had, has, has been running uh, 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 chaos and confusion around us. The enemy has been trying to kill us. The enemy has been trying to take us out. And God is like, oh, if you would just allow me, if you would come under the ark of safety, how much better your life would be. You wonder sometimes. Why people are looking over their shoulder. You, you wonder sometimes why, why people are always watching. Oftentimes, in, in, in many situations and circumstances, we may feel unsafe, but the good news for us is even in the midst of a community that is in crisis, there is a God who is there to protect and keep us. What would it look like for you to return to the ark of safety? What, what would it look like for you to operate like the, a, a true and a living God had his hand upon you? What would it look like if you understood and recognized and realized that the reason why you've been floundering is because you've been trying things on your own and God is saying to you in this first Sunday in Advent, in, in the midst of a community that's in crisis, that we need his hand of protection. What would it look like in your life? If tomorrow morning when you woke up, you woke up with the assurity of knowing that the hand of God is upon you, what, what would it look like when, when you log on to Zoom and, and, and that person who you see that irritates you uh, 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 every time they open up their mouth, what would it look like in that moment if you recognize that the hand and the protection of God is upon you? What would it look like when that, when that person tries to come against you or, or when that person tries to do evil against you that you recognize that the spirit of the living God is upon you and his protection is all around you? How much, how different your life will be? How, how different your functionality would be if you recognize that God is protecting you? The good news for us today is even as a community in crisis, God is able and willing to protect us. As we focus on a community in crisis, as we focus on, on what it means to, to try to restore, as we focus on what it means to be community, we need to recognize and realize that the hand of God is upon us. The protection of God is upon us, and, and that's good news for somebody today. <clears throat> those who, who may have been abused, those who may have been raped, those who may have been defamed, those who may have been ridiculed, God is protecting you. The hand of God is upon us, even in the midst of what might seem like chaos and confusion. After we recognize and see the protection uh, in this particular passage, the second thing um, that, that this community in crisis recognized was the need for connection. Somebody say connection. In verse number 18, it says, then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. In the midst of crisis, this community recognized that there was an issue with the connection that they had to God. And see, for many of us, the reason why we oftentimes feel irritated, the reason why we oftentimes feel frustrated in the midst of going through situations and circumstances is because our connection with God is not where it needs to be. In situations where the devil comes upon us, when I'm connected to God, I have the confidence of knowing that God is leading me. When I'm connected to God, I have the confidence of knowing that God is ordering my steps. When I'm connected to God, I have the confidence of knowing the words of Romans 8 and 28, which says, in this we know that all things work together. When I'm connected to God, I am reassured that God is ordering my steps. When I'm connected to God, I am reassured that God is keeping me. When I'm connected to God, I am reassured that God is walking with me every step of the way. What, what, what the children of Israel were saying in his passage was like, hey God, we know. We were, we were acting up. We were wilding out. 
We were doing what we weren't supposed to do. But God, we recognize that in the midst of that, that, that our connection with you was not where it needed to be. And God, because we want to be restored, God, because we want to be uh, uh, fulfilled, God, we need you to connect back with us. God, even though we turned our back on you, God, even though we strayed away from you, God, we need your connection in this moment because in the midst of crisis, that connection means so much. What would it look like in your life? What, what would it look like in, in your work life? What, what would it look like in your home life if you function like you were connected to a true and a living God? People are watching us all around. And the question that I have for you, it, it, are those people who are watching your life, would they know that you are connected to a true and a living God? Those people at your job, would they know that you are connected to a true and a living God? Those people in your, in your classes, would they know that you are connected to a true and a living God based upon your actions? Those people who you see in the, in the grocery store and at the corner, those people who you pass on a day-to-day -day basis, would they know based upon looking at your life and your behavior pattern that you are connected to a true and a living God? For many of us, if we be honest with ourselves, the answer would have to be no. If you are the only Bible that people see on a day-to-day -day basis, what would your life say about who God is? Would, would they know that God is a healer? Would they know that God is a sustainer? Would they know that God is a keeper? Or, or, or would they, based upon your life, would they think God was a liar and a cheater and a stealer and a backbiter? What is your life saying about your connection with God? It's always interesting. I was thinking <clears throat> earlier um, today, it's, it's ironic that the past two or three years, I'm always the one who preaches um, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, the beginning of the shopping season. Uh, and I always encourage people in the midst of this season to really examine what you're doing. We want to um, run to the malls. I know oftentimes malls are closed nowadays due to COVID, but we want to run to Amazon and we want to shop online. But in the midst of this season, you really need to ask yourself, is what I'm doing bringing benefit to myself or bringing benefit to those who are around me? In this season where people are struggling, in this season where people are in crisis in the midst of a global pandemic, what is your actions in this holiday season going to say? Is your actions going to benefit others or is it going to benefit you? Are the credit card companies going to be satisfied with the, the amount of credit that you're burning up or are people going to be blessed as a result of the blessings that God has given you in the season. What are you doing with your life in this season that is going to exemplify the connection to a true and a living God? It's not about spending money. It's about connection. It, 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 it's, it's not about writing a check and giving it to charity. It's about a connection. It's not about uh, buying gifts and putting them under the Christmas tree. It's all about connection. In the midst of this Advent season, what are you going to do? How are, is your life going to be better? How is the life of those around you going to be, get, be better? Because the connection that you have with God. Will you pour into people in this Advent season? Or will you expect people to pour into you? What is God saying to you in the midst of this Advent season? Is he encouraging you to strengthen your connection? Do you need to renew your connection with him? Have you, have you gotten lost in the midst of the chaos that's going on around you that your connection with God is no longer stable? The funny thing is, if our cable connection was not working properly or our phone connection was not working properly, we'd be the first ones to call Sprint, Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, uh, 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 Verizon, whoever it may be. But in our spiritual journeys, oftentimes our connection is horrible. It, it becomes unconnected, and we do nothing about it. The only time for many of us that we want to be connected to God is when we're in the midst of chaos and confusion. Because when everything is going good, oh, I'm good. I don't need God. Oh, I'm good. Like, you know, money in the bank, I got food in the refrigerator, you know, my car is working, my kids are in good health. Everything is great. But in the midst of chaos and confusion, we want to go running back to God. Even in the midst of God blessing you, we still need to be connected to God. Even in the midst of, of, of thriving and flourishing in the community, we still need to be connected to God. Because in that connection, 
That's where we find strength. That's where we find wisdom. That's where we find knowledge. And that's where we get direction on where it is that we're trying to go. In the midst of this Advent season, even though our community is in crisis, God is calling us to be connected to him. What would it look like in your life if you operated like you were connected to a true and living God? The good thing, the good news for us today is that we still have time to get it right. The good news for us today is that we still have time to reconnect to a true and a living God. Even in the midst of crisis, God is saying, hey, hey, I'm the same one who kept you when you thought you were going to lose your mind. Hey, I'm the same one who kept you when they told you that the lights were going to be cut off. Hey, I'm the same God who made provision for you when they told you that you were going to lose everything that you had. In the midst of chaos and confusion, God still desires to connect with you. I'll continue to say, we're, we're able to connect with God, but we have to be willing to get to the place where we want to connect with God. We want to connect with the true and a living God. After we realize that we have protection, after we realize that we have connection, the last thing that we see in this passage and the last thing that the children of Israel ask for in this passage is restoration. Somebody say restoration. In verse number 19, it says, Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. In the midst of chaos and confusion, God is able to restore. God is able to mend. God is able to put things back together. Just like Humpty Dumpty when he fell off the wall, uh, God is able to put us back together again. God is able to make us whole. God is able to make us pure. But we have to get to the point where we are seeking after him. We can't be restored if we're not seeking after the source. Now, I'm not talking about the liquor source. I'm not talking about the drug source. I'm talking about the, the, the true and living God source. God is calling us in the midst of this Advent season to be restored back to him. God is calling us in the midst of our chaos that is going on around us to be restored to him. God desires more for us. As we come to the end of the year and people are making New Year's resolutions, let your New Year's resolution be a deeper relationship with God. Not, not something that you tell everybody, but something that you actually work on. Many of us are in the same position on November 29th that we were in on January the 1st. I used to ask the question in the first couple of weeks of the new year, how you doing on your New Year's resolution? How many of you all on November 29th are still working on your New Year's resolution from January 1st? Probably not many of you. But in the midst of chaos and confusion, God is calling us back to him. God is calling us to be restored to him. God is calling us in the midst of chaos and confusion to come back to him so that he can help us to get through where we are. The good news for us today is that we no longer have to be broken. We, we no longer have to stay in chaos and confusion. We no longer have to be bound. We no longer have to be subject to the foolishness that the devil is trying to bring to us. The good news for us today is that God desires to restore us. Yes, God desires to restore you. It, it, it doesn't matter how broken you are. God wants to restore you. It doesn't matter if you were raped. God wants to restore you. It doesn't matter if you were physically, mentally, or emotionally abused. God wants to restore you. It doesn't matter how bad you think you are. God wants to restore you. And that's good news for somebody today. <clears throat> That's good news for somebody today because what, what, what God is saying to us is, I love you despite of you. I love you despite of your foolishness. I want to be in relationship with you despite the lying, despite the cheating, despite the backstabbing, despite the uh, confusion that you're causing. God wants to be in relationship with you. Oh, what a witness that it would be 
if we at Emory Grove and friendship, friendship begin to operate in our lives like God was protecting us, like we were connected to him, and to seek restoration in those areas where we have wandered. The good news for us as we go into this Advent season is that God is speaking to us in this place. The good news for us is that God desires to be in relationship with us. The good news is that we are not too bad, we are not too dumb, we are not too far gone, we have not messed up enough because God wants to be in relationship with us. What would it look like in your life if you got to the place where you knew that God loved you? How differently you would operate if you understood that you are a child of the Most High God. It doesn't matter if your father wasn't there. It doesn't matter if your mother wasn't there. It doesn't matter if people neglected you or abused you. God wants to be in relationship with you. God desires to be connected to you. God desires to bring restoration to you. And in this season, for many of us, that needs to be our prayer. God, restore us. God, in those areas where we are broken down, in those areas where we have been battered, God, in those areas where we have been uh, beat up, God, restore us back to where you want us to be. And I guarantee you, in the midst of being restored, God will blow your mind. But we have to be willing. We're able because we have breath in our lungs. And so as we move forward in this Advent season, even in the midst of, uh, of being in crisis, know that God is with you, know that God is walking in front of you, behind you, and on each side of you to hold you up. Know that God is here with you. And more importantly, that even in the midst of chaos and confusion, even in the midst of crisis, that God is still present. And that's good news for us today. And so as we go into this Advent season, as we go into this holiday season, and my prayer is for you is very simple. That in the midst of chaos and confusion, in the midst of uncertainty, that you will seek after a true and a living God to see what he has for you. And I guarantee you, when we get to the end goal, when we get to the end of our journey, and we reflect back on where God has brought us from, The journey will be well worth it. The pain and suffering will be well worth it because we will be, we will be able to see the glory of God as it has been manifested in our life. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen.